how to make a t-shirt design using one photo. That's what we're talking about today. I'm gonna show you guys how to take one photo from unsplash.com and turn it into a really badass design that you can uh, print and sell on your stores. Whatever you wanna do with it, you can do with it. Let's get it. Before we get started, I wanna go over a few things. So first off, I'm using the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. If you don't have the latest version installed, make sure you guys update it, install it or update it, one or the other, and just make sure you have the current version. It's going to help a lot when following along with my videos, okay? I'm always updating my Photoshop, but if you do by any chance have a legacy version, like an older version of Photoshop, don't worry, you can still follow along. It just helps if you have the latest version. So. With that out of the way, I already set up a new document for my t-shirt design. It's uh, 14 by 18 inches and it's at 300 resolution with a black background color. And if you want, I even included the photo that I'm using today in the description below so you guys can pause the video right now, go download that real quick and follow along with me if you would like to. So with that out of the way, let's go and get started. The first thing I need to do is import the photo that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Finder and just download the photo. So here's the photo and it's from unsplash.com so you are free to use it any way you would like to. Um, so this is it and as you can see, it's kind of off center. It's got a really big background for no reason. So the first thing I already wanna do is go to my rectangle marquee tool and just make a box around it. And what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask and then I wanna convert this to a smart object. From here, we can resize it to where we want it, just like that, make sure it's centered. So the first thing I need to do is obviously take that background color and make it darker because it is way too faded right now and it does not match with our t-shirt color, which is our background color of black. And that's a problem. So what I wanna do is actually go up to image, adjustments, and I wanna go to levels, and we're just going to adjust the levels real quick. So we're just gonna really darken those blacks, just like that, we can bring those mid-tones back up. All we're doing is messing with the shadows and mid-tones and the highlights to kind of fix the problem that we had there. Now what I wanna do is duplicate my image, so I have a copy, and then I'm going to hide the other one, and then I wanna merge everything together here. So you'll see what I'm doing in a second. So we're actually going to rasterize the layer. It's going to merge all of the uh, changes that we made into the photo. Just remember when you're rasterizing an image, you're taking all of the effects that are on the image, if it's a smart object, and you're literally just smashing it all together into one single file, one single layer. So I have the image, it's rasterized. I just hid the background layer. The next thing I wanna do is go down to FX, go to blending options. So now I'm just gonna take this slider right here. I'm gonna hold an option and split it in half. And as you can see, it's disappearing and we're just gonna keep going just like that. We really wanna get rid of those blacks, but not too much. So I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna hit okay. And again, we wanna uh, convert this to a smart object once again. The next thing I wanna do is desaturate this. So I'm gonna go up to image adjustments and add a hue and saturation adjustment. And we're just going to take that saturation all the way down and hit okay. And the reason why obviously is because I wanna start with a black and white image and add color to it using a gradient map. Now what I wanna do is add a gradient map over this. So I'm gonna go down here to this little circle, go to gradient map, which is all the way at the bottom, it's second to last. We're gonna click that and we're just going to find some interesting color that we think will look good for this particular design. And obviously it's looking really ugly right now because we have to change some things with it um, and we have to force it inside of this hand. In order to do that, we just wanna click on gradient map and we wanna hold an option, hover in between each image and just click once and that's going to clip it to our hand. Also a good habit to get into is to uh, organize your layers by renaming things so you know where everything is. So I'm gonna name this hand, hand, and then we have the gradient map. Everything's good there. And then what we could do with the gradient map is to make it look less ugly, we can take the blend mode and just change it. So just mess around with the blend mode. I'm gonna go to soft light, I think that looks the best. Now what I wanna do is add some text and change the colors up a little bit. So I'm just gonna hit T on my keyboard and then I'm gonna type out the end, which is just something random that I'm thinking of on the spot. And the font that I'm using today is called Astenia. I think that's how you say it. I could be completely wrong. Anyway, I'm resizing it to fit the design, um, kind of just eyeing it to see what might look good. And then I wanna add a quick color overlay under effects. So I'm gonna go to FX, add a color overlay, and we're gonna choose some sort of poppy color. So let's go ahead and go to like an orange color. Maybe we can actually do a teal and orange type look. So let's go back to that gradient map and try to find some sort of teal and orange kind of vibe. And I'm just gonna try to find one that I think will work for this. This one works really, really well. 
but it's a little too uh, strong. So I'm just gonna dial down the color a little bit. I think that looks much better. So now, as you can see, the colors really vibe. We got this teal and orangish look going on. And um, I think that orange actually needs to be a little bit more orange. Not too much. Okay, I think that actually looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, but now what I wanna do is add some texture. So I'm gonna go to Google and just look for some film grain texture, which I already found some right here. Um, if you guys wanna find any texture at all, just Google it and you're gonna find some. Simple as that. Found this like really cool plasticky texture. I don't even know how to describe this. It's like crunched paper. I think this is gonna look super sick. Yeah, look at that guys. Holy crap, that looks super cool. And then from there, we could just add a layer mask to it, invert the layer mask, go to our brush, and just start painting over it to add it back. And I didn't even expect to find this, but I actually do like it a lot. The only other thing that I would do with this texture is I would take the black out of it and just keep the white. So a fast way to do that is the way I just did it. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is just basically convert this to a smart object. Um, or just rasterize, it doesn't really matter. And then go to effects, go to blending options, and we're just going to hold an option, split this black tone in half, and slide it over just a little bit, hit okay, and then convert this to our smart object again. So when you go to screen print that, it's going to be much easier for the screen printer to make a screen with that particular texture. Um, that's just one way of doing it though. There's so many other ways of doing it. But uh, that's basically it for this design. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. And uh, let me know what you guys think about the new office space setup. I love it personally. I think this is my best one yet. I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. But my name is Charlie Pangas. Keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys later.